Well, welcome back. This is Stocks to Watch as we get pivotal insights on GT Biopharma, generating novel immuno-oncology, biopharmaceutical drugs targeting cancer, trading on the NASDAQ under GTBP. We're privileged again to be joined by Michael Green, the CEO. But first and foremost, welcome, sir. Thank you, Carl. It's, it's always nice to be here and always like giving an insight to the audience with regard to what we've been up to and some of the exciting things we have for t- lined up for 2026. Yeah, always a privilege to get you back on. And just diving into this, solar tumors represent the majority of cancers, you know, cancer cases globally. Can you kind of give us a sense of the scale of this burden, both medically and economically? So the solar tumor market is massive uh, worldwide. If you, the numbers range from somewhere of the order of 280 billion per annum to $400 billion per annum. So that gives you some idea with regard to the economic size, but also with regard to the the cost of human life and suffering, it's also vast. So if you look at things like breast cancer, for example, that's estimated to be, affect somewhere between one in six and one in eight women worldwide. And similarly for prostate cancer, that is estimated to affect one in eight men worldwide. And obviously, as the human population is getting older and living longer, it's estimated that there's going to be, for example, in the US alone, one in five or 20% of the population will soon be over the age of 65. And very much, unfortunately, as we all get older, it's kind of inevitable that some or some more of us will get cancer. So, so for us, from a company perspective, we see this as kind of like a very important thing that we're we're working on and very important thing that we find a cure for as soon as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And we're discussing this in relation to your GTB5550, which marks GT Biopharma's expansion into the solid tumor arena. Maybe for non-experts, can you kind of explain how this candidate works and what makes it unique? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Sure. So as I've explained in, in previous interviews, our technology is a very humane, less intrusive cure. So what it does, it's what's called an NK engager. So it the NK stands for the natural killer cells that the body has or <laughs> as you and I and usually know them as white blood cells. So if we get a fever, we get any, any sort of infection into the body, the body's own natural immune system then kind of rallies the troops and the white blood cells attack whatever thing is, is affecting the body. And in a normal, healthy human being, the white blood cells overwhelm whatever it is, whether it's fever or, or a mutated cancer cell, and they kill whatever it is in a normal, healthy human being. And unfortunately, as people get older or, or have depleted immune systems, they need some help. So what our drug is, it's, it's a molecule, which is a protein, and it's got three functional parts to it. So we call it a trike. So trike stands for tri-specific, and then it's the killer engager part is the other part of the name. So it's the three parts are a CD16 receptor, which helps to drive the activation and proliferation of the body's killer engager cells. And then it has what we call the IL-15 receptor, so that's interleukin-15. And for that, we believe it's what we call our secret sauce because interleukin-15, in the way that we have it folded into a molecule, is somewhat unique. And uh, that is really what what gives the, the, the molecule the really powerful element to it. And then the third element is the the thing that actually binds on to and kills whatever type of cancer we're trying to eradicate. So for solid tumors, the the thing that we look at is something called B7H3, which most, if not all, solid tumors highly express. And that means it's much easier for our molecule to effectively latch on to the cancer cells, which of course have mutated from the body's own natural normal cells for some reason. And then the trike assists with regard to activating the natural killer cells, but also helping to proliferate. So it, it if you like, it turbocharges the body's natural immune system to 
for it to produce enough white blood cells to overwhelm and kill the cancer. And then the third and an equally important thing is that it gives it longevity so it's sufficiently persistent in terms of the white blood cells to continue to kill and stick around so that if anything is left, that it's, it's then killed after that. So as I say, it's activation, proliferation and persistence. And those are key things. Yeah, I appreciate the insights on that. And I know this can be a bit technical, but GTB5550 targets B7H3, a compelling tumor-associated antigen. Uh, how widely is B7H3 expressed across solid tumors? So it's pretty much expressed across all solid tumors, as I said a moment ago. And just to give you some insight with regard to where we're, where we're at and what we're seeking to achieve. So we're about to very, very soon to file with the FDA what's called an IND or investigational new drug application for them to approve for us then to move into a phase one first in human trial. So that means that the trial that we're looking to do is going to be what we call a basket trial. And it means we're going to try and hit all of the most common, typical solid tumors that affect human beings and are highly expressed with regard to B7H3. So those solid tumors are going to be head and neck cancer, lung cancer, ovarian cancer, bladder cancer, pancreatic cancer, and of course, breast cancer and prostate cancer. And as I say, to, to answer your question, all of those types of solid tumors highly express B7H3. Yeah, and now preclinical data showed strong NK cell activation and ADCC. How do you plan to translate these kind of lab results into clinical outcomes? So that's a great question. We did a trial in 2021 for, for blood cancer, albeit it's slightly different, but we saw significant bone marrow blast count reductions in that trial, ranging as we got to the higher dose level, escalation level, which is how the FDA are very prescriptive with regard to first in human trial. But we saw bone marrow blast count reductions of somewhere between 33 and 65%, which was very, very encouraging indeed. So we are kind of hoping that we're going to see something equivalent with regard to reduction in solid tumors. And if you were to say to me right now, what am I hoping to see? I would like to see, as a minimum, reduction in the solid tumor size itself of around about 50%. So if we get a reduction of 50% in the solid tumors, whether it's breast cancer, pancreatic cancer, or, or indeed prostate cancer, for example, then for us, that would be extremely pleasing and very, very encouraging with regard to moving into what's called the next stage, which would be a phase two trial. Yeah, and considering the progress of GTB3650 and the preclinical results from GTB5550, I mean, what do these indicate about the robustness of the trike platform? So just to explain a little bit more in relation to you, so our, our molecule is, as you've rightly identified, a platform technology. So that means that, as I said earlier, it's a three functional parts to it. The two functional parts which remain constant irrespective of what kind of cancer we're attack looking to attack, would be the CD16 receptor and also the IL or interleukin-15 receptor. So they stay the same. And then with regard to the third part that we're looking to attack, that would be the binder, which actually binds on to the cancer cell. So for blood cancer, the that would be CD16. 33. Obviously, as we've talked about for solid tumors, it's B7H3. And then we're hoping to, we're looking at filing an IND possibly in 2027 for autoimmune disease, which is also very prolific, somewhere of the order of 115 to 120 billion dollars per annum worldwide. And that that binder would be CD19, which which is very common in a lot of autoimmune disease. So that's just to explain the background that it's a platform technology. But if you look at if you look at some of the ways and some of the things that have happened with small 
research oncology companies like ours and how they have grown and what's been achieved where they have actually attained some meaningful data. If you look at something like Kite Pharma, which was also a platform technology, that ended up being purchased by Gilead for, I believe it was $8 billion. Now, the reason why big pharma is prepared to pay those sorts of numbers for companies like ours, it's not just because you get good data, but it's also the speed and likelihood that you're going to be able to replicate that data across multiple different cancer types because you have platform technology, because you have the same two constituent parts of the three-part molecule. And the only part that you change is the binder. So the thing that actually binds on to the mutated cancer cell. And getting the binder right ought not to necessarily be that difficult because, for example, I've said that we know solid tumors highly express B7H3. We know that in autoimmune disease, a good binder is CD19. So we're, we're pretty optimistic. Yeah, I appreciate the insight there as well. And just to summarize a little bit, I mean, do you want to talk about some of the milestones the company achieved through 2025, just to give us an idea and what catalyst investors should focus on kind of moving into 2026? Sure, of course. Delighted to. So in 2025, our main specific goals were obviously to get approval from the FDA with regard to the commencement of the phase one trial for GTB 3650, which is for blood cancer, um, then to commence that trial, which we did, and then obviously to progress that trial. We are currently dosing, I believe, the fourth cohort of patients. So just to explain for maybe some of your viewers who are not necessarily familiar with how this works. As I said earlier, the FTA are quite prescriptive with regard to a first in human trial. So they tell the companies like ours that we need to start with the amount of drug that we administer to cohort number one to be extremely low because they obviously are quite rightly saying patient safety needs to come first. And that they have done with us. So we then escalate up the amount of drug that we administer to each patient through the cohorts. So, for example, cohort three was given, the patients were given five micrograms of drug for every kilogram of body weight per day. And now that we're in cohort four, the escalation is now 10 micrograms per kilogram of body weight per day. And the significant part of that is to emphasize we're now giving twice as much in cohort four as we give in cohort three. And equally, when we move to cohort five, that will be 25 micrograms per kilogram of body weight per day. And cohort six will be 50 micrograms. And then cohort seven will be 100. So for us, it's very important that we get progress and get some good data. So that will be the next catalyst. And we believe that we will be producing some of that data in the early part of 2026. And then looking ahead at 2026, obviously we're going, as I've said earlier, we're going to file an investigational new drug application with the FDA for the solid tumor trial, GTB 5550. We will then look to get the commencement of that trial approved by the FDA. And then obviously we enroll patients then we start dosing patients, and then we escalate up through the cohorts as we go. Um, so that will be in 2026. And then in 2027, we will look to file another IND for autoimmune disease, which I was, as I've said earlier, is a very, very large area in terms of how many people worldwide it affects. And it's economically, it's, as I said, somewhere between 115 and $120 billion uh, worldwide. So we'll file the IND hopefully in 2027 and hopefully commence dosing in 2027 for patients in, in that. And, that. and that drug will be GTB 7550. Yeah, and just to finalize here, why should investors consider adding GT Biopharma to their portfolios? So that's a, that's a really great question. So we are, we are currently a company that's actively conducting in first in human trials with regard to our very novel technology. So that's the first thing. The second thing I'd, I'd highlight is that the inventor of the science 
is a guy called Professor of Hematology. He's also obviously a medical doctor. Yeah, it's Dr. Miller. And he is one of the key opinion leaders, if not the key opinion leader worldwide in the natural killer engager space. He sat on the boards of many big pharma companies that, uh, in terms of the scientific advisory boards, and he's given advice to all of them. We are extremely lucky and very delighted to be able to call him our consulting chief medical director. Uh, he, as I say, he's the inventor of the science and he is someone who is highly regarded. So in terms of the science behind the company, we believe we have one of the best people in the industry worldwide. And I do not use that, that statement unadvisedly. I, I'm very careful when I say things like this. And then the third thing to stipulate is, of course, you know, in terms of the stock price currently in the market cap, I think it would be a reasonable assessment to say that they would be getting in at the ground level, floor one, in terms of taking the elevator upwards with us as we move through the cohorts, as we move through the catalysts and we achieve some of the data that we're hoping for. So in terms of where we are today, I think it's it's not unreasonable to say that the company has great expectations, great potential. And if you look at where we were in 2021, when we were when we didn't have as much drugs in our pipeline as we do now, we've got more than six drugs potentially, our company was valued at $550 million as a market cap. Now, admittedly, 2021 was a very different uh, marketplace. The, the biopharma market probably, uh, it's fair to say, did get somewhat overheated. But if you look at what our value is today, given what we have going on versus 2021, I'd say it looks like very interesting value. On that, Michael, I appreciate your time today. As we pass it off to the viewers, as always, we'd love to know what you think in that comment section. If you want to explore the company further, of course, we'll leave the links in the description. And consider subscribing for news and catalysts as it comes down the wire like this. Of course, we'll bring it to you here. But on that, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one. Thank you very much, Kyle. Always good to see you. Pleasure.